right, so I'm going to ramble for a minute here just to give any uh, on-time attendees time to get into the webinar. Um, my name is Jared Johnson. I'm with CData Software. This is the CData Coffee Break Enterprise 360 with CData Sync. Uh, just to get some of the business part out of the way, uh, this session will be recorded and the recording will be made available to the attendees and registrants shortly after the webinar ends. Uh, we have a Q&A portion built into this webinar, so if you uh, have any questions, um, all you have to do is enter them into the uh, Q&A panel in the Zoom interface, and that will allow uh, our team to answer those. Uh, and so with that, uh, I will introduce the team. So today we have Antoine Zarezki, who is going to be giving the presentation and the demo. And then we have two solutions engineers, John Tai and Riley James, who are waiting in the wings to answer any questions that you have during the presentation. So uh, I think with that, I will turn things over to Antoine. Sounds good. Thanks, Jared. Um, thank you guys for joining today's webinar. Uh, so today's agenda will be first covering a brief overview of CData as a company, and then we'll be providing a demo of our ETL replication tool called CData Sync. And so we'll be building Enterprise 360 with this tool. Um, and so that that's the, the agenda for today. So CData is the real-time software company for data connectivity. Our self-service data, our, sorry, our self-data products are um, universal to live data from uh, hundreds of on-premise and cloud applications. Millions of users from around the world rely on CData to um, enable the in, advanced analytics and cloud adoption to create a uh, more connected business. So CData is based in Chapel Hill, North Carolina with offices in the EM, EA regions and APAC regions. Um, we serve over 9,000 active customers and have over 100 OEM customers and partners that use our tools. So next we can talk about CData Sync. So CData Sync is an easy to use ETL solution that allows you to integrate data from any source and cloud platforms. So this can be on-premise or in the cloud, and you can leverage this to, um, to use an analytics, BI, marketing, accounting solutions to support vital business initiatives. CData Sync offers 250 different real-time fully managed connectors that give you the flexibility to work on your live data in the applications and systems that matter to you. With CData Sync, you can e easily leverage cloud to cloud, on premise to cloud, and cloud to on premise integrations. And this will allow you to access your data wherever it lives. And we support ETL, ELT uh, processes and with SQL and DBT transformations. So now we're ready to begin the demo portion of this presentation. So in this demo, we'll be simulating a company that has two CRMs. So this will be a Salesforce CRM as well as a Dynamics 365 CRM to replicate the data from each of these sources into a SQL server. This could be a scenario where you have an acquisition of, an, of a company that has a different CRM than your company, or if you're transitioning from an old CRM to a new CRM. We see these scenarios happen fairly often, and CData Sync is a good solution to bring the data from multiple sources into one specific destination. So in this case, we'll be replicating into a SQL Server database which if I pull up my management studio here, we'll be replicating into this CRM demo database. And just to show that there are no tables here, um, right now the tables are completely empty in this database. By the end of this demo, there will be multiple tables that we can query. So we can do that with CData Sync, which is our ETL tool. It's a replication tool. You can choose to run it on-prem in the cloud um, on a server, you kind of have free reign and you access it via a web browser. So you can see here, I'm accessing it on my local host because it's running on this machine, but you can obviously have it running anywhere that, that you wish. So we'll sign in here and you'll first be brought to a dashboard where you can see um, jobs that have been running, if they're successful or if they failed. And then also a list of them here where you can directly access those specific jobs. In this demo, we're going to create a whole new job. And so the first step for that is to configure your connections. 
So if you click on the connections tab here on the left, you're brought to this connection page. And you'll see at the top, there's the configured connections that are already set up. And then if you needed to add new connections, you can do that below. In this case, I already have the connection set up. So you can see here in the Dynamics 365 options, for example, you'll see the different parameters that you need to connect. So Dynamics 365 is simple. Uh, it's just an organization URL. And here we were using the Azure AD authentication. And if this was a new connection, this button below here would say connect to Dynamics 365. And if you were to hit this button, it would open up a new tab where you would authenticate with your account. There's always going to be a documentation link at the top right here. And so depending on the data source, it may be less straightforward. And so the documentation here will have a step-by-step gu -step guide for the different authentication types um, depending on if you want to connect via OAuth or if you wanted to connect via Azure AD. This will have the steps for those different authentication types. And for example, in other data sources, sometimes you need a token or you need to generate a service account. The documentation will cover the steps for, um, for that. So in this case, we already have this set up. You can see if I save and test, we're going to have a successful test. For the Salesforce connection, it's actually very similar. It's a URL as well. And then there would be a connect button that would also open up a new tab. And for SQL, it's a little bit different. Um, we support SQL authentication as well as Windows authentication. And you can see here, you just need server, database, and then user and password if you're using SQL server authentication. Here I can save and test. You see that there is a successful test. So now that you have your connection set up, you now want to create your jobs. So sync jobs, that will be the actual replication. And so it is, um, it is limited to singular sources and destinations. So we'll have to create two jobs. To do that, you just click create job and then type in your job name. So here we'll just start with the Salesforce to SQL, and then we'll just call it CRM demo. And we'll select the Salesforce source that we want, and then the destination as SQL. Then you have the option for standard or sync all tables. Sync all obviously selects all the possible tables and standard allows you to individually select the tables you want. So that's actually what we'll go with since we only need one table. So when you click create, you now are brought into this jobs page. At the top, you have the source and destination. You can access those connection settings directly if you click these links. And then below is the actual job settings. So the first step really is to add the tables that you want to replicate. To do that, you click the add tasks button. So if you click add tasks, we're requesting to Salesforce to see all the available objects and then it lists them below and you can search them. So in this case, we just want opportunity as the table to replicate, but you can obviously select multiple tables to your replication job. So now we'll click add and you'll see that it adds that table to the, the tasks below. You can get more granular control of this table if you select it. And then you can see here that it brings you into these settings. So the first thing to, to note here is the custom query option. This is where you can use SQL 92 syntax to apply transformations and filters to this table and this to this replication. All of our drivers and all of our connections support SQL 92 syntax. This just allows you to interact with your Salesforce or your Dynamics 365 data as if it were a SQL server. Um, in this case, since we are already replicating into SQL, we don't really need to apply any filters, but depending on your destination, this could be a useful feature. And if you're not familiar with SQL, there is a graphical user interface that does the same thing. So here in the advanced tab, there's this filter where you can select and or um, operations and you can add a rule. So for example, if you wanted to only bring in the ID one, two, three, four, you can see here that it appends it to the query here where you could type it out yourself or it does it automatically with the interface. This is also where you'll see a couple other replication options. So if you want to drop table, alter schema, you can do that at either the job level here. You can see it's inherited from job or you can do it at the table level if you wish. 
Last but not least, and this is arguably the most important feature, is the incremental check column. And so sync, by default, it will check to see if there is a timestamp or a last updated column. And if it finds one of these columns, it will automatically add it to this field here. There's also column mapping here if you want it to remove columns or if you want it to rename columns. So here we'll click OK. So next, before we run the job, we will cover other features of Sync. So you'll see here there's the job scheduler. Um, this is where you can set a scheduler at a interval that you want. So there's minutes all the way to months, and then there's also advanced cron expressions where you can get much more detailed control on the schedule uh, behavior. There's also a notifications tab here where you can set up email notifications and you can email on error only if you prefer that. And then lastly is the logging history. This is mainly for support. If you run into any issues, they'll have you look here and download the log if you're running into any errors. Lastly is this advanced tab. This is where you'll find the advanced settings where you can set them at the job level, but you can also set them as we covered in the actual table level. And then there's also the performance parallel processing if you wanted to run sync as a multi-node process you can do that here so now we're ready to run the job and replicate the opportunity table to sql so we'll select the table and then run um, and i have to save the job and so let's do that and then now we can actually run the job so select the table hit run and you'll see here that it affected 3221 rows and if we go into our SQL Server here, I can refresh. And then you'll see that the opportunity table is here. So now we're gonna do the same thing just with the Dynamics 365 job. So let me do that really quick. 365 to SQL. We'll select the source select the destination standard and then we'll add the table add tasks search for opportunities select it and then we'll run it Okay, and you can see here this opportunities is a lot less it's just 16 uh, different rows but if we go into the database here and we refresh you'll see that both tables are available so now that they're in sql um, you can obviously run queries against them so you know if you wanted to select the top thousand rows you can do that it'll run that query and you'll see that information and similar, similarly here, you can do the same thing with the opportunity tables. Now, you know, you can, if you wanted to do joins between the two or wanted to compare different values, you could obviously do that here. And so that concludes the demo um, and we'll be going into the Q&A session. So it seems like there are no open questions at the moment. So we do have a couple of questions uh, lined up uh, as other questions come in. So feel free to, to ask away if you do have any other questions, but um, I'm happy to pull up some of the, the most common questions that we have. So the, the first common question we see is just pricing information. So we, we have uh, licensing information on our website and we can put that link in the chat. Um, and we, we also have a sales team that you can reach out to once you know you have a little bit more of an idea of the use case and if you have a, a more enterprise environment um, we can get into custom quotes for that the second question would be where does this need to be installed so we kind of covered this earlier but sync can be installed on premise and in the cloud and it has windows and linux um, versions so we have a java based version as well as a windows based version and let's see, so can sync be used with other data sources and destinations besides SQL Server? And so the answer is yes, we support 250 different sources and we have a number of destinations that we support as well. So the destinations is a little bit more 
um, there, there's a little less options, but those are going to be the data warehouse and data lake solutions. So SQL, Azure, uh, S3, we, we support all, all the big, um, all the big data warehouses. We also have a trial available on our website. It's a 30 day trial that's fully functional. And, uh, we support, we have support during this evaluation period. So you can contact our support team at support at cdata.com and we're happy to answer any technical questions. And so it looks like it is now 1115. So um, I'd like to honor the time that we set aside for this webinar. And so um, for next steps, you know, you can learn more about CData and CData Sync at cdata.com slash sync. And you can find the free trial at that same URL slash start. Um, and for any questions, you can contact our sales team at sales at cdata.com. And we'll be happy to um, to answer any questions, whether that is technical or licensing related. Thank you guys again, and um, we'll see you next time.